Is artificial intelligence the future of recruiting? We can predict and simulate how well a player is likely to link up with new teammates at a new team. Or is the scout watching on from the sidelines impossible to replace? We're going out to watch players visually rather than on paper. I think it's a bit different, to be honest with you. The human eye or AI? The office or the terraces? How exactly do you find the next world-class player? You know, we see a lot of players that are good on the ball, maybe not so good off of the ball. And the understanding of the game, so the mental side is, is big. Their decision-making, um, that's what I look for. That's John Willis. He works as a regional scout for Manchester United and runs UK Football Scouting, an organisation which tries to match unattached players with clubs. This is one of the ways clubs around the world have traditionally found their talent. Scouts like John watch local leagues, youth leagues, school games, trial days and lower league matches. They're all searching for that elusive diamond in the rough. The scouts' eye test still matters, but statistics have become increasingly essential to all top clubs. While pass numbers, running stats and expected goals give a picture of the player, it's not complete. That's where AI can help to pick a player. With transfer fees in the hundreds of millions and wages through the roof, big clubs around Europe have spoken with AI Abacus. The scouting startup intends to revolutionise football transfers, with artificial intelligence that shows clubs how well a transfer will work out before they splash the cash. AI can tell Manchester City whether they should sign Harry Kane, Erling Haaland, or Kylian Mbappé based on how well they will fit in both on and off the pitch. AI will be more and more accepted. At the moment, it's really split, I would say, amongst clubs. It's definitely, in the last even two or three years, come on massive amounts and there's more trust being used in these models. It shot to fame in the mid-90s when Manchester United assistant manager Steve McLaren was one of the first to use it. The data Prozone provided helped United win their historic treble in 1999. Before this, the use of in-depth statistics was almost unheard of in football. Soon after, everyone wanted to crunch the numbers. Anyway, this is Prozone. Arsenal, Manchester United, Liverpool, Real Madrid, Barcelona and Bayern Munich. Europe's leading clubs need that extra edge, and Prozone is their high-tech tool of choice. Cameras positioned around the pitch feed straight into a computer that tracks the movement of all 22 players and the ball. There's nowhere to hide. It is a significant uh, advantage uh, because you have more information. So it's like all. It, then it depends what you do with it. Things have moved on a bit since then, and there's more information available than ever. But AI Abacus think they can move past the numbers to predict whether a transfer will be a hit or a miss based partly on a new innovation called a chemistry rating. Our sort of USP is trying to help teams be able to simulate a transfer and see how a player is likely to turn out at a new club. So we look at um, things like the languages they might speak, if they've played together before, if there's certain style attributes that link well together. On-pitch relationships like the one between Erling Haaland and Marco Reus can be hugely valuable to clubs. Players like Thomas Muller and Robert Lewandowski responding to each other without obvious communication are more difficult to predict for opponents. But will that change? Will AI be able to see the future? How does it work? Let's say Manchester City want to buy a striker. First, they need to narrow the field down from hundreds of thousands to something more manageable. This is done by position, eligibility, age and ability, as judged by the AI model. Now, 19 potential targets remain. Let's dig a little deeper. Those 19 players have been rated on all manner of metrics, from progressive passing and creativity to their resistance to pressure and aerial ability. But here's the bit that AI Abacus say sets them apart, simulating a transfer. First, the players are plotted on a graph according to how they will fit in at City, both tactically and in their chemistry with existing players. From that, Pep Guardiola and his recruitment team might identify three players, Harry Kane, Erling Haaland and Kylian Mbappé. Now, we have the stats, but what about the chemistry? The AI assigns a chemistry rating of 85 to Mbappé, 84 to Kane 
and just 75 to Haaland. Why so low? One reason is that the Norwegian has never previously played with any of City's current squad. Though he's expected to link up well on the pitch with several City stars, it's more difficult to predict how fruitful those relationships will be. Kane scores higher on this measure, having played for England with the likes of Jack Grealish, Raheem Sterling and Phil Foden, and is at a similar age to the majority of the players already at the club. But perhaps surprisingly, Mbappé edges ahead, even though he doesn't speak English as well as the other two. The way he linked up with players like Bernardo Silva at Old Club Monaco offers an insight onto how quickly he could integrate at City. While his predicted relationships with seven of the team's key creators bodes well, but would they be able to cope with Guardiola's demanding tactics? The AI says Kane would struggle to adapt to City's attacking structures and high press. Mbappé scores well in possession, but is not attuned to City's methods in transition, giving him only a moderate tactical fit. This is where Haaland shines. His natural game matches City well almost across the board, in possession and out. He should be able to hit the ground running. The final factor to take into account is the financials, where once again Haaland comes out on top and Kane loses significant ground. Mostly because he's older than the other two, so has a lower resale value. With all the angles covered, who should City sign? The answer is Erling Haaland. Though his chemistry rating was lower than the other two, his seamless tactical fit and the financials edge him ahead of Mbappé, while Kane is some way behind. Well, why do we need humans then? Because there's still plenty about players that you just can't see on a screen. Mark Farrell scouts youth players for English club Peterborough United after previously working at Arsenal. Even for academy prospects, he finds out as much as possible about a player before taking them on. Scouting is not just going to watch a player for five minutes and saying that they're going to be you know, the next Ronaldo. Sometimes the best players don't stand out. You have to look at their personality on the pitch. You've got to understand, well, you know, if there's a player saying, I don't know, number seven that we've gone to watch, you know, why is he underperforming in, from our report? Could be anything, you know, it could be something at home. You know, it's not, not every week they're going to perform just like how we go to work and not perform every day or every week. So it is really taking time and looking at players week in, week out, you know. So, will we soon see the end of transfer flops? All the data in the world didn't stop Real Madrid blowing 100 million on Eden Hazard. Manchester United releasing the expensive Alexis Sanchez on a free. Or PSG splashing out on and then loaning out Jose Rodriguez. There's little doubting the importance of statistics, but putting in the hours on the terraces should not be underestimated. Leicester City's Premier League win in 2016 owed plenty to Riyad Mahrez, Jamie Vardy and Engolo Kante, who cost less than 11 million euros combined, or about a tenth of a hazard. Vardy and Mahrez were spotted by Leicester scout Steve Walsh, who had actually been intending to watch other players. Turning up in the right place at the right time made the difference. Plenty still slipped through the net, though. Vardy, for example, was still playing non-league football in his early 20s. You will be here next year? Uh, no, I'm signing for Ibiza Town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be for an holiday and I'm never coming back. He's not the only one. Milan's junior Messias didn't turn pro until he was 24, delivering fridges and working on building sites to make ends meet. Wolfsburg hero Grafice went from selling bin bags in Brazil to the Bundesliga title. And of course, there's cult hero Luca Toni. Who bounced around the lower divisions in Italy before getting his big break in his 20s. With increased statistics and AI becoming available at lower levels, the best players should start to be picked up earlier. But there's a long way to go. For youngsters who missed out on academies, the best hope remains getting spotted by a scout. My name's Jack Cutmore. Um, I'm aspiring to be a professional football player. Um, I'm 19 years old. I'm following my dream, basically. I got support of my family and friends, so I decided to come all the way to the UK from Australia. You see those stories and it always motivates you to push harder. Like, even though I'm 19 and haven't come through that academy stages, you still always think I can make it because you look at those kind of role models that have done it before. And, they're at the top of their game, you know, you just 
that's kind of the dream. No matter what happens, you just got to keep pushing. It seems there will always be players that won't have been analysed or whose qualities have been missed by the machines. You get some that just have never been in the right place at the right time, if you, if you like, that have never been seen by scouts. And you've got others that may have grew up in academy, got released for a, a variety of reasons. Players develop at different times as well. You know, there's still plenty of scouts out and they're about a game, so I think, I think you always will have that. You know, I think the data will assist it. I think there's a real nice sweet spot between AI helping humans make better decisions and being able to sort of simulate and see where the decision may go. I don't see it being some sentient being taking over all the football and there being AI managers, but yeah, I definitely see there being a way that you can work together. It speeds up their job by being able to bring the pool down to a smaller, smaller set of players. They can then have their own opinions about them players and then get assurance around those opinions based off of what the AI is saying. It's early days for AI in football, and we're a long way from sci-fi scenes of robots in the dugouts. But high-quality information leads to better scouting. Without the right players and chemistry, teams will go nowhere. Just as they need to find the blend between attack and defence, clubs must recruit smartly by balancing algorithms and data with human judgement and experience. After all, the next Erling Haaland or Kylian Mbappé will probably be found by a human, but you can be sure he'll also have been measured, tracked and rated by a machine.